Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're going to try to combo off using Shifting Woodland, turning it into a copy of Omniscience that's in our graveyard. So we now get to cast our spells for free, and then with Fae of Wishes we can pretty easily win the game by getting cards out of the sideboard. So that's our game plan in a nutshell. How do we get there? Shifting Woodland enters untapped if we control a forest. We've got Breeding Pools plus basic forest that we can fetch for so that it enters untapped. And then we also need Delirium, meaning four or more card types among cards in our graveyard. And in this deck it's going to be Instant, Sorcery, Creature, Land and Enchantment. So we've got five different types to try and get Delirium. And then it only costs four mana to let Shifting Woodland become a copy of a target permanent card in our graveyard. And then it doesn't matter if it's tapped as long as we can copy Omniscience. And then now we get to cast our spells for free. We'll use the Granted from Fae of Wishes to get a card out of our sideboard. That's a non-creature card. And and put it into our hand, we'll get a copy of Mastermind's Acquisition, which can then once again search a card from outside the game. We'll get a second copy of Acquisition, which then gets a copy of Scholar of the Ages, which when it enters can get two Mastermind's Acquisitions back from our graveyard. And then now we can get Approach out of the sideboard, cast it, put it in our deck, use a second Acquisition to get Approach from our library, and then cast it a second time immediately, thanks to Omniscience, to win the game. So that's the combo finish. Now of course we do need to get Omniscience in the graveyard and we also need to have Delirium. So a lot of the cheap cards in our deck are dedicated to milling ourselves and filling the graveyard. At one mana we can also play Kami, which is both a creature and an enchantment. So it's pretty useful for Delirium and then can maybe speed up the deck by a turn. Later can also be channeled, although it doesn't come up very often. Then we've got Seed of Hope as a one mana instant to mill two cards and then maybe put a permanent card from among the milled cards into our hands and gain two life. If we mill Omniscience we're not forced to put it in hand so we can leave it in the graveyard where we typically want it. And then Traverse the Ulvenwald is perfect here. Early game we can use it to get a basic land. And then late game once we have Delirium enabled it can get both a creature as well as a land that's non-basic. So we can get our Shifting Woodland if we still need one. If we already have Omniscience in the graveyard ready to go and Shifting Woodland in play then now Traverse turns into a win condition by grabbing our Fae of Wishes. So it does a double duty there. And then a Fae of Wishes also counts as a discard outlet. If we play it for two mana, we can pay one on a blue, discard two cards to return it back to our hand. So that way, if we have Omniscience stuck in hand, we can still get it in the graveyard. So that's useful. And then, of course, the four mana granted adventure will kickstart the chain of events that wins us the game. Then we also have two copies of Founding the Third Path, which can start from any chapter. Can maybe start by casting a free instant or sorcery with mana value one or two. Then chapter two we get to mill four cards and eventually can maybe get something back out of the graveyard, which can maybe keep milling more cards. Then we've got uh, Picklock Prankster, which can mill four cards, and then an instant sorcery or fairy from among them we can put in hand. So it can also help find our Fae of Wishes and also helps fill the graveyard, hopefully finding an omniscience in the process. And then we've got Tygam's Scheming, which lets us surveil five. So this gets to dig pretty deep. Can also maybe keep some cards on the top of the deck, like a Shifting Woodland or some other mill effect. So that's also quite useful. And then Malevolent Rumble is also great, as we get to reveal the top four cards. We get to put a permanent from among them into our hand. And then we also get to make a Spawn Token, which can maybe help us double spell on the following turn. And then a Sator Wayfinder will mill four, and then we can reveal a land from among them to put in hand, so it can also help find Shifting Woodland. And then Archdruid's Charm, not only a way to find a land, so it can find our Shifting Woodland, but it can also be a tutor for a creature once we have the combo online, so that can also help find Fae of Wishes to close out the game. And then a four copies of Omniscience, which we're mostly hoping to mill instead of draw, since our only discard outlet really is Fae of Wishes, which is a little clunky, so that can take a little bit too long to set up. And then our mana base, lots of blue-green dual lands, including lots of forests for Shifting Woodland. Prismatic Vista as the only legal fetch land that enters untapped early in Historic. Can get basic forest or basic island. Poseju we can also maybe tutor for with Traverse when needed. And then Sunken Citadel is also important since it can add two mana for abilities on lands. So that can also speed up the process of activating our Shifting Woodland. And then the sideboard has a couple more slots available besides the combo pieces to maybe help find answers to other fast combo decks in the format. So we've got Tormod Scripts, which we can play for free. So it's four mana to cast the Granted, so we can maybe slow down other graveyard combo decks. Pithing Needle, mostly to name cards like Charbelcher out of the blue-red Charbelcher combo decks, can also slow them down potentially. Could also name a Jani out of the red-white energy deck. 
and then regrowth gives us another way to access cards in our graveyard maybe in case we're up against a control deck that tries to counter one of our key combo pieces here we can still maybe use fail of wishes to get regrowth and then continue comboing so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play this hand seems a little clunky with only one land double kami I guess we can channel one of them, but still only have the one land to start out. And then Fae of Wishes is a discard outlet for omniscience, but that does require four mana. So I'll take a mulligan. This is a bit better. Question is, do we keep omniscience since we have Fae to discard it? Or do we look for a different omniscience? We can go turn two, founding, play free, scheming. Probably going to have to put everything in graveyard since we're going to mill four afterwards. So we do get to dig pretty deep for another Omniscience. And I think I can use all my lanes. Whereas, um, yeah, before I can discard Omniscience, it's going to be a while. So we'll try this. And then we can start by fetching, which will also shuffle the Omniscience back into our deck so we can maybe mill it. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Turn one Soulscar Mage, so a burn deck. I guess I could have waited to fetch because I didn't necessarily want to increase my odds of drawing Omniscience for the turn. Either way, now we can Founding. Start from Chapter 1 and cast a free Scheming. All right, so happy to put Omniscience in the graveyard. And then we should be close to Delirium here between Creature Enchantment, Sorcery, Instant Land. And then Traverse can get Woodlands. Fae of Wishes is our win condition, so we're very close to winning the game. Just need to get up to 4 mana. Opponent's blue-red wizards. And then Rumble can give us a chum blocker as well, potentially. Don't see the opponent dealing 17 damage from this position, but they can certainly do some damage with Arcanist. So let's rumble, see what we hit, and then doesn't matter here since we've already played land for a turn. I don't think it really does. Maybe get the Wayfinder anyway, but I don't think I'll need it since we can traverse for Woodlands. And then next turn both play and activate it and get Omniscience. So our opponent would need some sort of counter spell here, or graveyard hate to interact. Or just deal 17 damage. Yeah, Reckless Charge could have been a way to do a lot of damage. But opponent just moves to attackers. So I guess it's still possible that they're holding a counter spell. They cannot really counter the Woodlands giving me Omniscience but they could counter the Granted Adventure, and I currently don't have a replacement for it. Founding goes to Chapter 3, which I guess technically could still traverse an additional time, since the Scion or Spawn token here gives me an extra mana. But Pwn's gonna take it out. So now the most they could do is cast a Spell Pierce for single blue. Which would still trip us up. Can uh, now actually with the Archroot's Charm, we should be good to go. Now I do still need to exile something, but we have plenty of sorceries to choose from, so it's not going to mess with my Delirium in any way. So yeah, we can get Omniscience, cast Granted. If they try and counter, then Charm gets another Fae of Wishes, and then we're still good to go. So we're going to decline here. Now they could also try to counter some other combo piece here. But we should be able to figure out a way to fight through it with Archer's Charm getting another Fey. Gets color. This one they cannot spell Pierce.
get approach. The life gain is also useful against wizards. Now, interestingly, if they counter the first approach, it doesn't matter. The second one still wins the game. So your opponent might be waiting for me to acquisition cast approach again. But that's fine, since we still have regrowth to get it back. So did our opponent have anything? They did not, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have Shifting Woodlands. Can Vista for a forest, play Kami, put in Woodlands. Turn 2, we can maybe Seed of Hope or Traverse for an Island and then cast Scheming. So yeah, this hand has potential. Facing a red-white, a life gain energy here. And we can just play Forest now. Could keep the woodland as a surprise, but I don't think our opponent has a meaningful way to interact with it. Turn to Raptor. So they already have a red permanent in case a Jani shows up. And now Vanguard means they get to give this plus one plus one. Still somewhat interested in chum blocking just to get creature and enchantment in the graveyard. And I don't think we're gonna soak up more than two damage. Alright, so think it's still Seed of Hope plus Scheming. Probably start by fetching an island. Unless I want to play like a Citadel if I find it. But I don't think that's the case, so... Fetch island in case we mill it. And then Seed of Hope first and then Scheming in case I want to keep a card on top. We milled Omniscience, perfect. Don't need to put that in hand. Wayfinder still fine since we already have Creature in the Graveyard. And then, yeah, next turn we should be able to combo off. So can play the Wayfinder as an extra blocker as opposed to the Scheming. And don't really care about missing here. So yeah, next turn just play a land. Activate Woodland, doesn't matter that it's tapped. And then Fear of Wishes is our win condition, plus we have Traverse for redundancy. So I don't know if our opponent has any way of interacting here. Bone Crusher, that's not gonna do it. So yeah, I guess the energy decks, they usually don't present lethal before we get a chance to combo. So as long as we have a functional draw, we should be able to get there. But uh, it's definitely not a guarantee. So, and granted, and get acquisition. Acquisition outside the game for another acquisition. gets a scholar which gets back double acquisition and then our last outside the game search for approach cast approach and then acquisition for a card in our library so I have to be careful here and then approach again to win so yeah not too cumbersome in terms of uh, comboing off once you have omniscience on the battlefield on to the next one Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand. Woodlands already available, entering untapped. Opponent with a Crackling Falls. Could be an energy deck, could also be the uh, Charbelcher combo, which uh, yeah can potentially win the game on turn 3 with a very good draw. We can also technically win on turn 3 if we start with Kami to speed things up. And uh, yeah, Spikefield Hazard does point in the Charbelcher direction. At least it didn't make a treasure. So the earliest they can win now is probably turn 4 with a Iron Crank feat. We can start from chapter 1, play Malevolent Rumble, I think. And then next turn we could double Prankster if we'd like to try and mill Omniscience. Do I want any of these? Maybe another Founding, which can then play Prankster. Okay. There's also a chance we uh, mill Omniscience next turn, and then I can play Woodlands, activate, get Omniscience, and then we can likely win the game from there. So it's a race. 
Now, Archroot's Charm can technically exile artifacts and enchantments, but if our opponent plays Charbelcher with a Iron Crank feat, they'll still have the mana to activate it. So in that case, I don't think we can stop them. If they just cast the Charbelcher, then Charm can be a nice answer. Okay, opponent keeps up two mana, maybe to make a treasure with Magma Opus. Can we mill Omniscience? And we cannot. So in that case, there's not much I can do for opponent has Iron Crank feet into Charbelcher. But the best I can do, I think, is just uh, founding cast a free Prankster. And then we can still Prankster in the opponent's turn. And there we did Mill Omniscience, so next turn we can win since Charm can get Fae of Wishes. But yeah, we'll see if our opponent has Iron Crank Feet. They do have the Magma Opus. They need Feet into Charbelcher specifically. Yep, yeah, there it is. So we might be dead here. I guess now they also have the extra treasure they can target with creativity. So if I did still have triple green available, charm destroying the treasure could have fizzled that turn. But sadly, that's not the case. So yeah, had I kept up Archer's charm, I might have been able to survive here. But we did not, and Charbelcher will just win the game. Alright, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a reasonable hand, no discard outlet for omniscience, but a good way to get our shifting woodlands, and then we should be able to figure it out from there. So yeah, turn one Kami, put in Citadel on green. If we draw land, we could arch its charm to get the shifting woodland next turn. If not, we can uh, maybe just traverse to get a basic. Right, now we could rumble, probably get a land, and then I can still likely Seed of Hope. And we found the Woodlands, even though it does enter tapped right now. And that's still probably fine. It means we can maybe use Traverse to get our Fae of Wishes in the future. Opponent in the meantime blue-white, so it could be a control deck. Never mind, Jeskai, I guess could still be control. As we draw another Omniscience, not our favorite draw. So we could go end of turn, Archdruid's Charm to put a land in play. Probably still fine to main phase a Seed of Hope. Finding a Fae of Wishes, or do we want the Botanical Sanctum? I think it's Fae of Wishes, just because we know we can use it. And then now, probably just want to traverse for a basic to hit my land drop for the turn. Can get an island if I'd like. So I have double blue to both play Fey and activate it. Don't really want to play the Fey right now, because then I wouldn't be able to activate it as well, and it's potentially susceptible to removal. So we'll pass. And our opponent has some energy sub-theme here with tune the narrative. Okay. Sunken Citadel with a draw. So, can cast Fae of Wishes and then see if they want to do anything about it. And then we can return it back to hand at instant speed. But we're just interested in discarding two cards here. So we'll pass. And then, yeah, with the Archroot's Charm left over, plus Fae of Wishes, that's likely going to hand. We'll have several win conditions once we get Omniscience on the battlefield. They might try and take out the Fae. Flame of Honor, that's fine. Just drawing two cards. Could have responded by activating the Fae, because now they could maybe remove it in response to me, getting it back in hand. But then it should be mostly tapped out. So 
we'll see. Delirium has been achieved. And get to untap. Draw another omniscience. So step one could be to just cast another omniscience. Just to have that insurance. And then we can start comboing. Get acquisition. Get another one. And get our scholar. Let's see if our opponent's gonna fight over it. If they don't. Get back double acquisition. And get approach. Cast approach. They might fight over the second approach. In which case it's gonna be interesting how we decide to close it out. But nope, opponent concedes. And that's good enough. Could have also then used Archerid's Charm to get another Fay of Wishes, which can then get Regrowth, which can get back a Mastermind, or perhaps a Scholar if it dies, and then we'll figure out a way to get Approach back and win the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gigantha as companion. Our hand seems a little clunky with double Omniscience. Fay of Wishes is a way to potentially discard it later, but that takes a while. In the meantime, we have Citadel. We need a good Tigam scheming to enable Delirium so we get Shifting Woodland. And then we can look into Fae of Wishes discarding Omniscience. So it could get there. On the play, maybe it's not so crazy. Alright, fine. And then we'll start with Citadel on, I want to say, blue here, since I will eventually need double blue. And then I can fetch Forest. Opponent on Blue-Red Wizards. Turn 1 Symmetry Sage is always scary. So, could also go for Prankster first. Although Scheming kind of wants to keep a land on top in a way. Although Traverse could always get one. But better if we can enable Delirium first and then Traverse for Shifting Woodland. And speaking of Woodland, could keep one on top as well. That way Traverse could also get a win condition. We do want to enable Delirium, and I guess currently it's only lands and creatures and sorcery, so we're still missing one type. But I guess just putting the Woodland on top could fix that problem. And then maybe I actually want to draw the Botanical Sanctum, so we also have double blue for Fae of Wishes going forward. Although, what's my play for next turn then? Play the Fae, hope it doesn't get removed. So I can discard Omniscience on the following turn. That's a little risky. If I traverse for basic, we're shuffling away Woodland. But I guess I could still get an Island, so maybe I just bin everything. Draw Woodland, traverse for Island. Can Prankster, and then turn 4, Fae activate, turn 5, win the game. Might be a little slow, but we'll try it. And Woodland does enter untapped, thanks to our forest. So yeah, if we see that we can't afford to wait on Fae of Wishes, we can always play it right now. And Arcanist means our opponent can maybe get back a removal spell to deal 3 damage twice. So that's maybe another reason to hold Fae of Wishes in hand for a little bit longer. So yeah, for now we're just gonna traverse and getting Islands. And then can adventure the Prankster. Because if they do have, let's say, a Flame of Anor to take out Fae of Wishes at instant speed, then I might need another win condition that the Prankster can find for us. And then Woodland can tap for green to activate its own ability, so it's not like I need an extra green source here. But yeah, opponents could do a lot of damage here with both Symmetry Sage and Arcanist. Don't mind seeing a sleight of hand for starters prefer the opponent drawing some cards as opposed to dealing more damage. Mm, 
So yeah, ideally Prankster finds another Fae of Wishes, Traverse, or Archroot's Charm could maybe do it too. That way we have a redundant Fae of Wishes available in case the first one dies. Because that way I can keep Fae of Wishes as a blocker in the opponent's turn, maybe block with it to soak up some damage, and then pick it up at instant speed. Ah, found a Rumble instead, and another Scheming. So, no Omniscience in the graveyard still. Could also try Rumble plus Scheming, but that's not a guaranteed Omniscience in graveyard, so I think we're on the Fae of Wishes plan. And then at 13, hopefully we get to survive here, but it's not a guarantee. So yeah, what happens if I try and pick up Fae and they kill it? Next turn I still have an Omniscience, which means I could Scheming to stack the top of my deck and then Rumble. And then I guess we're hoping to put a Fae of Wishes on top, to then hit with the Rumble to then win the game. So that could still work. Bono did not fire off anything end of turn. Now 4 mana to deal 13 damage past the 1-4 Flyer. Another Arcanist, they can maybe give haste to... Yep, so our opponent's got one mana left. No burn spells in the graveyard. But the Arcanist can get back Reckless Charge. And now Wizard's Lightning going face. Okay. So are we dead? I think our opponent might have it here. Depending on what they target. Because the Arcanist does have Trample. Opponent does get to cast a free Wizard's Lightning. And then a free Reckless Charge as well. So this should have just enough because I can soak up three from Symmetry Sage. But then they still have enough Trample damage going through. Alright, so it just took us a little bit too long here to set up. So that's going to be 12 damage going through. But next turn we would have been able to win since we had Fae of Wishes in hand. Alright, good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, we've got a promising hand. Could traverse for basic island turn one. Or I can keep Traverse to eventually get a Fae of Wishes. I think getting Island is reasonable, since we also have Archer's Charm to maybe get Fae once we get Omniscience down, and possible I want to cast a Scheming next turn. Although Wayfinder is also fine. So we do need to both mill Omniscience as well as find Shifting Woodland still. Opponent also a Graveyard deck with Stitcher Supplier. Looks like the Dredge variety here with cards like Silver Smoke Ghoul, Narco Amoeba and friends. Drawing Omniscience not ideal since we don't have easy access to discard outlets outside of Fae of Wishes. For now I guess we'll play the Wayfinder since I wouldn't mind hitting my land drops. And we did not find any. Okay, so we can try again next turn. Or we can Scheming. But again, we still need both Woodlands and Omniscience in Graveyard. So it's going to take us a little while to set up. Don't have the most seamless start. Opponent with her own Founding. Just milling for four. Milled Creeping Chill, which will get back Silver Smoke Ghoul end of turn. Don't really want to block Stitcher Supplier usually. And we drew another Omniscience, that's unlucky. Okay, let's go for Wayfinder, can maybe find a Citadel which I can play tapped. And this needs to name green, so we have triple green for Charm perhaps. Could have technically used Busage on Founding as well, but there's nothing too scary for them to get back. So yeah, we do need some help off the top. Best case scenario, we just scheming milling Omniscience and keeping a Shifting Woodland on top. That way we can win on the following turn. But with two Omniscience in hand already, that's not super likely. Opponent in the meantime finding Narcomiba, which will get back a prized Amalgam. 
at least the Wayfinders can get in front of the Silver Smoke Ghoul. And another Supplier. Milling another Ghoul. Okay, that's acceptable still. So we can trade here. Find a Prankster. So how does that change my sequencing? I also only have the one blue source, so if I were to, let's say, Archroot's Charm to get Fey of Wishes as a discard outlet for Omniscience, I can play the Fey, but I cannot immediately discard the Omniscience. Plus, we still need the Shifting Woodland as well. So I think Scheming might be my best play here. As opposed to Charm, I guess I could also get the Shifting Woodland. But without Omniscience, it doesn't do a whole lot. And Scheming digs a little bit deeper than Prankster, although Prankster could find, let's say, another Rumble, which I can cast. So maybe Prankster is actually a little bit better. I right, found the Rumble. And we can cast it. And Omniscience goes to the graveyard, that's good. And we found another blue source, just in case. Okay, so now I'm liking my chances. Still need to find Shifting Woodland, but Archer's Charm can maybe get it. Although then I would still need a Wing Condition, so maybe we'll use Scheming to try and find it. In the meantime, our opponent's not applying too much pressure, so the Wayfinder should buy us a little bit of time. When I was playing the new Cephalid Colosseum as well, that makes a lot of sense. A card we could technically play as well in our deck, although it's a little awkward with Archer's Charm since it doesn't help cast it. And now Glimpse, yeah, that's a scary one, milling 10 cards, although... Yeah, it looks like they just milled more ghouls without creeping chills. So Wayfinder can block Amalgam, take the rest for now. And find Traverse. All right, Traverse is a win condition, but it can also get um, Shifting Woodland, so that should do it here. Traverse for Woodland, play Woodland, enters untapped as well, and then Charm gets Fae of Wishes, and that's game. This taps for double green, and turn into an Omniscience. Could also cast another Omniscience, just because. Search for a creature. And then we just need to make sure not to misclick here. Keep searching outside of the game. And get Scholar first, getting back double acquisition. And get Approach, cast Approach, and then the final acquisition wants to search our library. And our opponent knows what's happening and explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Halurus, so likely energy. And our hand seems acceptable. We've got Woodland already, just need to mill Omniscience. And we've got a lot of self-mill effects here. Kami would have been nice to speed things up, also don't have Citadel. So, not the most explosive hand, but against Boros Energy, which is what I expect to be up against here, it's more about just consistently getting to the combo around turn 4, ideally. And uh, if we don't get there super quickly, it shouldn't really matter, since the Boros deck, while it can provide a pretty quick clock, usually doesn't win before turn 4, turn 5. Especially if we can throw a few chum blockers in the way. So we'll start with a tab Breeding Pool. And then turn two, probably go for Wayfinder, although scheming is also an option. Turn one, also at Pride, so it's not like the Wayfinder blocks it profitably. Could even consider playing the Prankster as a 1 3 just to get in the way, although it doesn't progress my own game plan too much. Although there is something to be said for slowing down the Ocelot. If our opponent plays a Jani, they could transform it, but they wouldn't have a red permanent in play yet. So. Yeah, close call. I think I'll just stick to my own game plan. And then I already have Woodland, so I'm really just looking to mill Omniscience here. So to that end, I think Scheming is our best option. And then Rumble lets me double spell next turn. 
Probably fine to put the rest in the graveyards. We'll have creature enchantment sorcery. So close to delirium. And then with the rumble we should enable it next turn. And then I already have some other ways to mill so I don't need to keep more of them on top. Opponent's got a voice. So yeah, playing prankster in this case might have worked out, but... Well, that's a rumble. And find Faye, so still no omniscience. And then, do we prefer Wayfinder or Prankster? They both essentially mill four cards. Might prefer the Chum Blocker for voice while we still can. And then either way I have double blue to maybe cast some of our fairies next turn. Still no omniscience. Do we want islands over second woodland? I think so. That way I don't have to take two damage. Alright, so we had a promising start, but we've seen about a third of our deck and still no omniscience, which can certainly happen. Opponent with a raptor into another voice. So yeah, this Ocelot Pride's going to town. Could also trade for the 1-1, one -one, or maybe just take it for now, since next turn we can likely soak up a little bit more damage. And we should get another turn. Another Archroot's Charm. So this is kind of my last chance to mill an Omniscience, which means we'll just use the Prankster, which can maybe still hit another Rumble, which I can cast, so I should main phase it. Alright, we found Omniscience, perfect. And then now Cedophobe gaining life versus just casting a random blocker. I guess it doesn't matter too much. I'll get the Fey. And then we can just cast the Prankster. Although maybe Fey of Wishes for Toughness is more relevant if our opponent has the Energy Burn spell. And with another Fey of Wishes in hand, we should be covered. Alright, so just need to survive this incoming attack, and next turn we should be able to combo off. Happy to chum block. So we'll see if our opponent can clear a path. Static Prison, yeah, that clears Fey. And another removal spell, yeah, Discharge will do it, because also at Prides will hit with First Strike, growing double voice, so they'll have exactly enough here. So had I chumped last turn, I might have been able to survive as it turns out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Lurus, which likely means energy. Our hand has the Shifting Woodlands, Omniscience I can maybe discard with Fey of Wishes. So we technically can get there, but it's going to be a little slow. Better to just mill Omniscience. But uh, yeah, we'll try it and see if the energy deck is fast enough. They can certainly present a pretty fast clock if they get their Guide of Souls going, or if they can transform a Jani. But if they keep a removal heavy hand, maybe they won't be as fast. Playing Fey of Wishes on turn 2 is a little risky if they can remove it. Because then I may not get a chance to discard Omniscience. But if I have to wait until I can play and activate, then we're maybe turn 4, turn 5, try and combo. Which gives the opponent more time to set up. So we'll see here. Turn 1 Guide. So odds of our opponent taking out Fey of Wishes, our opponent would need to make an energy with Guide of Souls and then also have a Galvanic Discharge. So it's certainly possible. I think I still try it, otherwise I feel like I'm going to be too slow. Now we also still need Delirium, but Tangam Scheming is a good enabler. And then Fave Wishes can also maybe block to soak up some damage, although probably not this turn, otherwise we may lose it to a Galvanic Discharge. Another Guide, up to one energy. And do they have the removal spell? Just an Ocelot still... One of the better starts for the energy deck, Amped Raptor not included. As they get three energy, end of turn make another token, gaining two more energy. And then they can start pumping the creatures with Guide of Souls. So a great start for the Boros deck. So yeah, I can tag am scheming, try and fill the graveyards, but then I'm shields down on Fey of Wishes. 
But now if I let our opponent untap and they have a Galvanic Discharge, they can take out the Fey at instant speed. And looks like I'll need at least another two turns to set up. One turn to discard Omniscience, one turn to get Delirium for Shifting Woodland. So that's not ideal. So what does that mean for me? Just maybe scheming hope to mill Omniscience and just leave Fey in play for now? Sure. And then we've got lands, enchantments, instant and sorcery all going to the graveyard. So yeah, we technically have delirium, but we do not have an omniscience. So I do need the Fey. Seed of Hope could be a way to maybe gain some life next turn. So yeah, if I keep Seed of Hope, I can still activate Fey. That's maybe the way to go. And then Fey can maybe soak up an attack. Although I also need to pick up the Fey of Wishes as our actual win condition. A voice is acceptable, although it's going to get quite large very quickly. Also, at Pride Attacks, opponent can pump it twice with Guide. So we have to take five. And then next turn we can hopefully chum block and activate. Still in trouble if they have a Galvanic Discharge. And then I don't need to show them the Shifting Woodland yet if I don't want to. Just pass a turn. So the plan is Chumblock Voice, discarding Woodland's Omniscience, and then we can still Seed of Hope to gain two life, and hopefully that's enough to survive. Two cards left in hand. Opponent moves to attackers. So yeah, as it turns out, we might have been able to wait on playing Fae of Wishes this game. Since not having Delirium meant we couldn't really combo off yet, even by discarding Omniscience. Now we also have to hope they don't take out the Fae in response to me picking it up. Although then I would have expected them to take it out before attacking. And we have a forest here for Woodland to enter untapped, not that we needed to be untapped to combo off. That worked. So we only take eight. Can still cast the Seed of Hope, but it shouldn't really matter. Since we now have an instant, so we have Delirium. Yeah, I guess we did need to just cast it just to have a fourth type in the graveyard. So I better opponent didn't see this coming since we didn't have Woodland in play, we didn't have Omniscience in the graveyard, and now all of a sudden the whole combo got assembled. So yeah, the Boros matchup in theory is favorable since we don't really care about them having some removal. They can gain life all they want, we can still win through it with our combo. But sometimes they do just have a fast start, as you can see with Guide of Souls and Ocelot Pride. They can certainly present a fast clock. And then if you're not ready to combo on turn 4, you could be too slow. But unless they've got some instant speed removal for omniscience, we should get there. So get acquisition. You get another one. And with a second Fae of Wishes in hand, we've got additional insurance. In case our opponent's got like a reprieve. I guess reprieve wouldn't do much with omniscience in play regardless since we can just uh, recast our spell for free. 
So can't think of too much that could go wrong. Mana Tithe, I guess, could technically still counter, which was a reason to maybe tap the Woodland itself when activating the ability. Opponent's gonna take out Scholar. So yeah, they did have Discharge. They should have just tried to clear a path for Voice of the Blessed, and then they might have been able to win last turn. But now we have the combo. So yeah, sometimes you do get some win percentage just from the opponent not knowing what's happening. So don't expect that to last for too much longer. All right, so we got to see this shifting woodland combo in action. And yeah, we won about half of our games, maybe a little bit more. And uh, part of that is maybe the deck still being an unknown quantity. People don't exactly know how to play against it. Not that there's a whole lot of interaction in Best of One, since if you don't have Graveyard Hate or Counter Spells or maybe some Hand Disruption, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Even Hand Disruption is not that great when Shifting Woodland can still turn into an Omniscience from the Graveyard. So the deck's pretty resilient. The question is, is the deck fast enough to compete with the other aggro and combo decks in the form? Format. And from the games, most of the time we lost, we were one turn away from comboing. Sometimes it's just going to be a matter of being on the play versus being on the draw. So it feels like the deck is competitive enough to hang with some of the other decks in the historic format, but there's still a lot of room for improvement, and we can easily dip into other color combinations. If you go into black, you get access to more removal, maybe some discard effects, some tutor effects like assemble the team, more ways to fill the graveyard like Grizzly Salvage, could also play the new sweeper. Toxic Deluge, which can be great at slowing down the Boros Energy deck, so that's certainly a great option. If you go into red, you maybe get access to Faithless Looting as another discard outlet to easily put Omniscience in the graveyard, and then you could also play additional discard outlets like maybe a Scrapwork Mud, which also counts as an artifact for Delirium, so that can also slot in perfectly. And if you stick to blue-green, you could also play some of the Strixhaven lesson cards, since by learning you can also technically discard and draw, so that gives you another way of maybe discarding Omniscience if it's stuck in your hand, so that's also a potential direction to take the deck in. So again, there's a lot of room to explore, and I've uh, barely scratched the surface. So for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!